Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I will review the fourth album by System of Down, which is Mesmerize. Uh, yeah, I went from loving this band, or I believe I liked them at first, I just, you know, kind of liked them at first. Then I absolutely loved them for a bit, like, you know, I think last year I really loved them. And then I progressively, you know, got kind of a love-hate relationship with this band. And now I just kind of think they're mediocre, they're kind of overrated, but you know, they're not really overrated because the press doesn't really talk about them that much. They're just really loved by the public, you know, a lot of people love System. They're, they're kind of like Slipknot, you know, they're kind of really popular, but they have the albums to make it up though, or you know, critics say their albums are pretty good, so. You know, System, they are a good band, I would say. They are a pretty solid band, but. They were never really my cup of tea because they, you know, they have kind of like this anthrax approach to things, you know, and not as in songwriting or, you know, really great bass playing or amazing drums that I love about anthrax. They, they, they have, you know, this kind of fun, clowny, joking matter to their music, which I never really cared for in their music, it's kind of a gimmick, I suppose. Which always was kind of a turn off for me, you know, you have these fucking songs where they're talking about uh, banana pies and fucking, uh, you know, what's the thing, banana pies and, you know, my cock is bigger than yours and stuff like that, you know, uh, Chop Suey, you know, making a fucking song about a Chinese dish, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Wikipedia says it's a new metal album, just full blown new metal. Uh, I wouldn't really agree with that personally. I think it's more of an alternative new metal album, but you know, uh, alternative metal, new metal, hard rock, progressive metal. I don't agree with progressive metal, but there, uh, there's definitely a song on there that you know people do consider a progressive metal song, but nah, you know, people think that the fucking debut is a fucking speed metal album. I mean, come on. Now. Uh, Rick Rubin actually produces all of their albums, I'm pretty sure. So Rick Rubin thought from the beginning that System of Down was a great band, which, you know... I, I guess they are, you know. I, I guess I can't really deny System. Uh, alternative metal, new metal for uh, Toxicity. Uh, speed metal for the, the self-titled? No. <laughs> um, Steal This Album doesn't have a label. It's just, you know, Steal This Album. I guess, you know, it's just a fucking... It's kind of like the amnesiac of their discography, you know, after releasing their Kid A, I suppose, they release, you know, their amnesiac. And I, you know, prefer both records. I prefer even amnesiac above fucking to Toxicity because I think, you know, I think we can all uh, agree that Radio is a way better band, so there you go. Mesmerize, which is a full-blown nu metal album according to uh, Wikipedia, you know, they're never right, so there you go, or they're, they're most of the time not right. And Hypnotize is a heavy metal hard rock album, so this is definitely the most accessible album. Or, you know, Hypnotize, which I reviewed already, which was kind of like... I do agree with Metacritic, I believe I gave it a 7.8, so it was a pretty solid record, but there were really... There was a lot of filler on that album, but it ended strong, I think. It ended really strong and it started off pretty decent, so there you go. Uh, so this record, you know, this was the first, uh, you know, the first of the two uh, to come out, you know, it is kind of a double album, I suppose. Um, upon, us, upon, upon its release, the album received widespread acclaim from critics, uh, sure mate. I don't really agree with those critics, but I do, uh, I do an overall like system, I would say. They are a good band, but I do, I don't like every aspect of the music because they are kind of like a, a joking you know fuck all kind of bands you know they do have a lot of like jokes within their kind of uh, music they're, they're kind of like uh if tool was a punk band that's probably the best way how i can describe the band you know without the weird visuals they're kind of like a more in your face kind of band which I'm not a huge fan of, you know. I'm I'm fan of uh, I'm I'm a fan of Tool because they are kind of like a more uh, approachable, kind of a more weirder, progressive. You know, they have a more interesting sound, I think, to scope out. Where System of Down are kind of like a punk band, I suppose. And I'm not a huge fan of punk. So um, 
the first song is a soldier si is soldier side the intro and you know um i don't know if you know the, uh, this guys but you know if you have watched my hypnotize review i love soldier side i think that is a great song really great melody i love the the riff on it too <coughs> Uh, yeah, so Soldier Side is definitely a classic on Hypnotize. And you know, after hearing that song, I was like, you know, people wanted a new System of Down album, but that song was so fucking perfect to close out, you know, the, the fucking System discography. Like, Soldier Side is such an appropriately uh, song to end on. And I was like, do you really want to continue afterwards? Because the band doesn't really have an interest in going on anymore. Holy shit, this album got an 85 on Metacritic, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, it is a good record, but uh, yeah, you know, we will get into the rating sooner. It's gonna be a really, like, ironic rating for me, I already know, so there you go. Uh, yeah, this intro is kind of pointless because you have the soldier side song, you know, just go to hypnotize the ending and you will have the full song. Why listen to this intro bullshit? I don't really get it, but you know, it goes right into BYOB, uh, bring your own booze, bring your own bombs. Uh, you know, it is bring your own bombs. But most people, you know, bring their own booze if you, if you want to party to it, which is kind of difficult because it's it's a po it's a politic it's a politically stated song. You know, bring your own bombs. So there you go. Uh, I I said to this song, it is a it has catchy riffs. It is a good song overall. But the one uh, oh what the fuck? I said catchy riffs. Cringy riffs. What? What the fuck? I'm just kind of high when I wrote it. That's Jesus Christ. Um, catchy riffs, cringy vocals. It, I'm kind of like divided between the uh, between the song because um, I don't think it's a terrible song. I think it is a good song. The riffs are really captivating. They're really like thriving. They're really like uh, you know captivating. I, I, I think I already said that, but. They're really, tr yeah, thriving. They really like get you going, I suppose. It is a very good riff because it's a very like energetic kind of like, you know, good opening riff. Uh, yeah, so I do really like the song. Um, the riffs are really good. I just think that the, the vocal delivery, you, you know, that fucking, that fuck all vocal delivery from uh, Darren Malakian. It's just so fucking cringeworthy. Like I, uh, I'm enjoying these riffs, and then you know, then those fucking vocals kick in, and then I'm like, yeah, all right, the song is ruined now. And whenever Alex said it, I was like, oh man, it's still a good song, man. Shut up. And now I'm like, yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> like, I, I completely agree with Alex whenever he, uh, you know, reviewed System or whenever they were on Watch Mojo. He just said like, oh yeah, it's a good song, but uh, wait till you hear this. And then he was like, do you still think it's good? I thought so. So uh, yeah, I'm really like 50-50 between the, between the song. Musically, it's a pretty good song. It's a, uh, you know, very clever, clever, fucking hell. Uh, it's a very clever written song, clever, cleverly. It's a very cleverly written song by the band. I'm not very clever, by the way. So. It's a very cleverly written song by the band. It's you know, bring your own bombs. Uh, it has some very political of uh, vocals, some very political lyrics in there. Some very accurate uh, lyrics about you know the John Bush uh, registration. Is it called John Bush? <laughs> that's a fucking and uh, that's a fucking armored saint member. Uh, fucking uh, George W. Bush. There's some very accurate uh, lyrics on there about him. So there you go. You know the the then American president. So there you go. Then we have Revencha, which is, uh, it, it sounds like Russian, the song to me. If a bunch of Russians would have teamed up and would have written a fucking uh, System of Down tune, it would probably sound like a Revencha. It would pro Revencha. It would probably sound like a Revencha. A, re a Revencha. It would probably sound like Revencha. What the fuck am I on about? I almost want to say Avengers or something, but fuck that gay shit. Uh, fuck superhero moves, by the way. Fuck that mess. Fuck that noise. Um, yeah, so Revencha. Uh, I, I believe that this is song that goes like. Or how, how did it go again? Um, fuck's sake. It was just a really gimmicky song for me. Uh, I don't ex exactly recall it again, but when I hear it, I know it, of course. But. Um, you know, it's just a very, like. 
gimmicky kind of song. It just sounds like a song where you're like jokingly dancing to, kind of a parody kind of song, so it's not really real to me. It's still a good song, I would say, but it's just kind of cringy, but you know, it's not as cringy as this next song, Cigaro, which is basically a fucking dick measure contest, you know, of uh, system members, like, uh, fucking whipping out their dick, dicks and fucking, uh, you know, comparing dick size to each other. My cock is way bigger than your the My cock can walk, walk right... I, I don't know, go again. My cock can walk right through the door. <laughs> like, what the fuck are these lyrics? Like, Cigaro is definitely my least favorite track so far because it's... It's just one of those fuck all songs. I named it System of a Down, Love Cox. They love it in the butt, I didn't say that, but you know, or I did, but I didn't write that down. Uh, you know, I'm just joking here. I'm joking as much as the band would do. So uh, yeah, this is definitely kind of a joking song. I know that of course, but it's just such a fuck all song. Like every fucking system member wrote it, this song. Are you fucking kidding me? That's just retarded, man. This is just a retarded song, like fuck's sake. Then we have Radio Video, which I named, of course, MTV Kill the Radio Star. Um, and I also called it Bipolar Song, uh, because, you know, it reminds me of MTV Kill the Radio Star, good song. And then uh, it reminds me of, a bi you know, Bipolar, you know, Axel Rose or something. Uh, because mainly the song is very like inconsistent in uh, tone. It, it it is very like uh, relaxed and chill at one point, and it's very uh, hey me, look at me now, I'm on the radio. You know, it's, it's just very like heavy in your face, and uh, I do like it. I do like that the song is as diverse as, as it is, but it does make it a bit inconsistent. It it is written of course by Darren Malekian. Of course, you have that fuck all vocal delivery. So uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this song. So it, it is kind of similar to B B Y O B. There are some good parts in there. It's a clever, cleverly written song. I can never say that fucking word. Uh, it's a cleverly written song. I would say it has a lot of good moments in there. There's actually a reggae part in there. Do -do 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 -do. They take me away. You know there are some very catchy parts on this track. But I do think it's a bit inconsistent, but still a good song. I would still call it a good song, but it is a bit, a bit joking -y. It is a bit kind of a fuck all song, I would say. Uh, then we have Disco Kane makes me feel like I'm on the song. Which is basically System's way of saying that, uh, or, or no, 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 that I wrote another fuck all song. So it's basically another Cigaro. Uh, how, did, how did this song go again? Uh, Disco Kane. How did this fucking song go again? Like, I have to hear it again, because... Well, I only have to hear one note, and I know exactly what it's about. This game makes me feel like I'm on the song. You know, whenever you know, and whenever those vocals uh, kick up and stuff like that, not a huge fan of that. Uh, yeah, just kind of a fuck all song, honestly. Uh, the album has been pretty mixed for me so far, so you know, it is kind of fuck all, I would say, but it does get better, I would say. This is the last fuck all song I would say, it does get kind of more serious at the end, so I do like that. Uh, then we have Violent porno Pornography, and I'm pretty sure I wrote it, uh, Extreme is their favorite genre, if you know what I mean. Or Hardcore is their favorite genre, if you know what I mean. I, I thought it was Extreme. Uh, and I don't mean Hardcore Punk or something, but you know har which Hardcore I mean. Just, I mean, just look at the title. Um, yeah, so... System do have a really heavy part on this track, and I do really like the, you know, the fucking take that they have. Um, it is pretty funny, and, you know, it, it, it is just a very funny song. It's written by uh, Darren Malakian. Again, uh, I don't know why he wanted to write a song about pornography, but... Uh, yeah, it's basically like a hardcore uh, sex scene, you know. There are some, like, soft parts in there when you're just trying to warm up. 
And then, you know, you have the rest of the fucking uh, session where it's just pounding and smashing and, you know, kicking and stuff like that and just hardcore sex. So, yeah, violent porno pornography, it kind of speaks for itself, honestly. Uh, Darren Malakian, another cleverly written tune, if I say so myself. And then we have Question the 8 track, which is easily my favorite uh, song on this album. And yeah, it is pretty much my favorite System of a Down song because uh, Watch Mojo actually called this a progressive metal tune uh, in you know, the top 10 System of a Down songs. When I was a huge fan of the band, now I'm not really a huge fan anymore. So uh, this track was actually solely written by Serge Tankian. So if that is the case, or it's actually the only track ri uh, solely written by Serge Tankian, I'm pretty sure. Uh, all lyrics written by Darren Malekin and Serge Tankin, except for noted. So, this track was fully written. Um, oh, wait, what the fuck? What, what, is, what is this fucking crediting? Uh, all lyrics written by Darren Malekin and Serge Tankin, except for noted. All music written by Malekin, except question written by Tankin and Malekin. But then they write everything together, and now they're uh, written by both. What the fuck? <laughs> now, just read it for yourself. Just go to Wikipedia, uh, track listing to mesmerize. The fuck is this This questioning, right? Like, literally, questioning. What the fuck is this? Oh, this is really weird. Um, so, yeah, I, I think what they're trying to say is that Darren makes up the songs or something, and Search Tankin helps out writing the lyrics, and now it's reversed. Tankin, uh, uh, you know, came up with the song, and Malekian wrote it, the lyrics or something or reverse, or together, or Sir Stankian wrote it the majority of, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are, like, the, it's, this is confusing me, fuck. Uh, but Question is a very good song, I do like that Sir Stankian does kind of take a lead in lyric department right there. Very good lyrics on there, or uh, Sweet Berries, Ready For To Go, uh, they, are, they are no different than you. Well, I'm not gonna say good lyrics, but uh, they are unique lyrics. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, and actually wrote it Sugar Progressive Take. This is kind of like um, Sugar, you know, the, the fucking self-titled track or, you know, from the self-titled album. It's kind of like Sugar, but a more progressive, a, a longer take on that song. I do really like uh, this track. It, it, it is very, like, punchy. It has that intro acoustic guitar riff that I really love. Um, it has that awesome scream by, I'm pretty sure, Serge Tankian. So, overall, I do like Serge Tankian's screams, but I, I'm i kind of iffy on their Malekian screaming. I, I, I think he's more of a, of a regular singer rather than a screamer because B.I. will be O.B. is kind of like, you know, that's kind of a fuck all vocal delivery, I would say, or kind of a fuck all scream delivery, spoken word delivery, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's definitely a great track. Um, I, I really love that the track is kind of like, uh, it's kind of, Builds up, builds up momentum, and then you have to, you know, you have that final uh, riff right there, which I always really love whenever it goes into that. Uh, whenever it's just, whenever it sounds like a machine gun or something, it's so fast, so thriving. It kind of reminds me of One by Metallica, so this is definitely the greatest song in my opinion the system has ever wrote it. I really like it. Uh, and then you have that uh, that final vocal delivery, yeah, you know, that's fuck, or not percent fuck, fuck all, but that awesome vocal delivery right there. If only System made more songs like that, kind of progressive, kind of like unique, kind of folky, kind of, you know, like this, I love this song. Why don't they have more songs like this, fuck's sake. I love questions. So Search Tanker should, de should definitely write more songs because I definitely prefer his uh, songwriting, but, but at the same time, they're, they're writing both on this uh, on this record. So, you know, do with that what you will. So there you go. Uh, and then we have the last two tracks, which are both titled Hollywood. Uh, the first track is written by Malekian and the last one by Boat. So you can definitely hear, uh, yeah, I would probably say that Malekin is my least favorite member, although he is kind of an unpredictable, kind of funny guy. I don't think his songwriting is really good, or, you know, Stars on Broadway or something. Never really got into that, honestly, but old school Hollywood. I, I wrote it, Death Punk meets System of a Down, because you have those, uh, you have that, you know, that part. 
bolts go harder. You know, you have those row bolts, which you know instantly remind me of Daft Punk, kind of like a, a lower tuned kind of Daft Punk, I would say. Uh, yeah, and it definitely reminds me of a better group because I love Daft Punk, but I'm kind of like iffy on system nowadays. Or I, or I always was, you know, even when I was a fan, I was like, you know, banana boy, banana boy, oh, bo, 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 bo. you know, I was like, what the fuck are these lyrics? <laughs> uh, and I still think that to this, day, to this day, so there you go. Kind of fuck all songwriting, I would say, so there you go. Um, yeah, so Old School Hollywood, it is a good track. I do wish that it was a bit longer, but... Oh shit, I forgot a sad statue. A sad statue, uh, although, uh, well, I forgot it, but... It's definitely sad that I forgot it, but this is definitely, I wrote it, um, uh, what did I wrote? BYOB, the good version. This is kind of like uh, the, the fucking BYOB riff again, that good riff. But it's without, it's without the Darren Malakian screaming. So they wrote it both on this record. Uh, they co you know, they co-wrote it together, so there you go. So I definitely prefer this because it's, you know, without the stupid ass scream and it's actually just a really good track. I do think that these last four tracks were really great. I wish that the whole record was like this, but it's still pretty solid. Um, yeah, so Sad Statue, definitely a very a teary song. It's very melodic, really great uh, harmonies on this track. So Sad Statue, definitely check it out. Uh, a very underrated song. It's so underrated, I forgot to talk about it. There you go. Uh, yeah, I already talked a, a majority of old school Hollywood. Death Book meets System of Down, good track I would say. Uh, it's kind of gimmicky, it's kind of too short I would say, but you know, do you want a longer track of this? Uh, Tony Danza cuts in line, old school Hollywood, da, da, da. you know, what, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? But I still like the track because it, uh, it sounds gimmicky, but it sounds uh, the good kind of gimmicky, the good kind of cheesy. You know, you have the bad kind of cheesy, uh, well, glam metal, I suppose. I, I, want, I want to say some system lyrics, I, I suppose, but I can't really think of anything because system hasn't really made anything bad, but yeah. There are some styles of system over down, like Siguro and Disco K makes me feel like I'm on the song Pogo. Uh, vicinity, Obscenity or something, or Fixinity of, of Obscenity, you know that. Banana, 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 cherry pie, banana, cherry pie, banana, pie. You know that song, you know, fuck that song, Jesus Christ. And actually, I believe that that was one of my favorite songs at that point, which is fuck that song. <laughs> I kind of have a love hate relationship with that song. But uh, Lost in Hollywood is definitely uh, the most ambitious song that the band arguably has ever wrote. It. I believe it's the longest song of their career, it's 5 minutes and 20 seconds. Really great harmonies by uh, Serge Tankian and Darren Malakian. Very great vocals on this track. Uh, I believe they're saying all you facts are there. Uh, they are smoking weed uh, on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, yeah, there are some really fun like rhyming lyrics on this track. Holy shit, this, the, the self-titled debut got, a, got fucking widespread acclaim. Like five stars galore. Fuck sake. Um, yeah, so definitely a um, good ending song. It does hold up with Soldier Side as two of the best system closures, I would say. And Aerials, of course, that's a classic. And you have Pluck on... Oh, fucking spit it on my fucking computer. You, you might even saw that. Um, yeah, but, you know, Pluck, politically lying unholy cowardly killers. That, uh, very accurate. Uh, Aerials is a great track. Still, just, yeah, I would say the only closing song that is kind of you know off putting is uh, Streamline, which was kind of you know forgettable. But the rest of the ending songs of System are always really good. And Lost in Hollywood, Lost in Hollywood is definitely a high in that regard. It's definitely a great closing track. A lot of great uh, riffs on there. Very like appropriately sounding ending uh, kind of sound to it. I know it was kind of cringy, but uh, Lost in Hollywood, great track. I, I am really glad that Sir Sankian and Darren Malakian wrote this song instead of Darren Malakian because usually when whenever Darren Malakian, Malakian solely writes anything like radio video and violent pornography and old school Hollywood, it kind of does go out of the window. It does go kind of sound, but. 
it is still really good i would say it's still a really good album i definitely think that the uh that the first side of the of the album is kind of gimmicky for me it's not terrible but it's you know it could be better radio fear is pretty good i do like that one disco k makes me feel like i'm on the songs kind of fuck all violent pornography is a fun song question is is pretty much the best system song in my opinion Set Statue is a really underrated cut on this record. Oscar Hollywood is uh, pretty good and Lost in Hollywood is uh, a great closer and arguably one of the best system songs. And yeah, I did go to I did go back to uh, the system songs, but I have to look or no, never mind. Uh, mind on self-titled is six minutes long, so that's the longest song. Yeah, I, I think that's the longest because toxicity was really short. Uh, like fourth was the longest with uh, four minutes I'm pretty sure uh, yeah four four minutes solely so yeah there you go um, yeah all right uh, I'm pretty sure it's still the song was really short yeah 42 minutes you know it's pretty much a punk album in a way 60 songs 43 minutes oh well, that's decent but still Got a good, it got good range though, so there you go. Mesmerize, um, yeah, 520. So, Mind is the longest system song. I didn't even know that. I thought it was uh, Lost in, or, or, yeah, yeah, Lost in order. With I was about to say it right, then I said it wrong. Holy Mounts is pretty long too, so uh, there you go. Um, yeah, I would say that Mesmerize starts out strong, I would say, musically. Then it kind of goes south in the middle, and then it ends really strong. So this album is overall pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't call it an amazing album, but I would say that it's a, it's a very solid album. It, it is a bit better than um, Hypnotize. It's, you know, the sequel, I suppose, the sequel to the prequel. Uh, so I'm gonna give this album an 8. I think it ends really really well. It opens up pretty good. The middle is kind of fluff, but there's still some good stuff in there. So yeah, this album is an 8 out of 10 for me if, if I can fucking speak. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about System of a Down's Mesmerize. I'm, you know, I'm not a huge fan of System of a Down, but they have some good albums in their discography. Mesmerize and Hypnotize have some really good songs on there. Self-titled is pretty heavy and I think Toxicity is a classic, so there you go. I'm only not a huge fan of Steel This Alm, so I kind of have the reverse opinion, you know, as opposed to Alex, so there you go. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, yeah, let me know what is your take on System of a Down, Mesmerizer, you know, System in general. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.